Thank you, and I'd like to thank the organisers for the opportunity to present our work uh, on the Clarity Trial. And I present this on behalf of 11 centres and the research nurses, investigators, and of course patients uh, recruited throughout the UK over the last 18 months. Um, chronic lymphocytic leukaemia, or CLL, is the most common hematological malignancy, or sorry, leukaemia in adults. It, it uh, occurs in about six patients per 100,000 are diagnosed with this disease. And the conventional therapy for CLL is chemoimmunotherapy, although virtually, or the vast majority of patients will relapse after chemotherapy, and until recently the, the treatment options were limited with most patients dying of the disease. Uh, the last few years have shown, have, have, uh, shown a rapid development in our understanding of this disease, particularly uh, that this disease is a driven disease with a, all patients having proliferation of the tumor uh, cells with the pathways now being worked out through PSO receptor signaling. And also, every patient virtually having an abnormality of apoptosis, so the leukemia cells don't die, leading to the accumulation of the disease and uh, resistance to treatment. Both of these pathways have led to novel agents which have been recently approved for the, as single agents for the treatment of CLL. Ibrutinib was approved as, uh, as a targeted treatment against brutin tyrosine kinase, which was approved in 2013 as a single agent both in, in America and, and in Europe, and is uh, approved for all lines of therapy with CLL. It's clearly had a major impact on the outcome of patients with this disease, uh, showing overall survival advantage in, in many trials over the last few years. However, ibrutinib does not eradicate disease, and patients remain on treatment indefinitely or until progression. More recently, venetoclax has also been approved both by the FDA and EMA for resistant patients with CLL. So the, the indications are slightly different, slightly wider in Europe. This drug has uh, a very rapid effect, which actually leads to tumor lysis syndrome, which is very unusual in CLL, but also leads to the eradication of minimal residual disease in some patients with a single agent which uh, we know from chemotherapy trials is associated with prolonged survival. The CLARITY trial uh, is, a, was a, is a feasibility trial where we recruited 50 patients with relapsed refractory CLL uh, who had failed chemotherapy or was with porous disease who had failed uh, often targeted therapy uh, into a combination study of ibrutinib and venetoclax, so targeting the two main pathophysiological pathways of this disease. The key endpoint, because MRD is associated with a better outcome, is, a, is the eradication of mineral residual disease at 12 months, with the possibility of stopping these therapies rather than having indefinite treatment. And I'll, I'll show you the key secondary endpoints of six-month MRD in the blood and marrow. Of course, we're all also interested in the toxicity of this regime, uh, and we have a variety of exploratory endpoints in this phase two trial. The study, uh, we, we treat patients initially with ibrutinib to debulk the disease. They get two months of uh, ibrutinib monotherapy, which is uh, usually well, well uh, tolerated. We do bone marrow before and after that two months, and then at, at two months we uh, add venetoclax. We have an escalation for the first month to uh, abrogate the tumor lysis syndrome. And then bone marrow is performed uh, at, at six months, 12 months, and 24 months. And in this uh, trial of 50 patients, I think we've missed one bone marrow in all the patients. So that they are, um, the patients have been very compliant with the treatment. The, the, if the patients are MRD, minimal residual disease, negative in the blood and marrow at six months, they stop therapy after 12 months, six months of the combination. If they're negative at 12 months, they stop therapy after 24 months, because the, our modeling suggests that's the most efficient way and to get a prolonged, potentially uh, indefinite uh, remission. This is the group of patients. We recruited 54 patients. The majority are male, as we see in all CLL trials. They've all failed treatment, but they've had a median of one prior line of treatment. 20% uh, of it got porous 17P, and a quarter have 11Q lesion, which again is a porous feature in chemotherapy. Uh, the, the majority of patients, 81% of patients, had failed or been previously been treated with the two most commonly used chemotherapies, most effective, FCR or bendamustin rituximab with some patients being treated with a targeted treatment, idololysib. 
I should have said that patients were not permitted into the trial if they'd been exposed to either ibrutinib or venetoclax previously. In terms of the, of the toxicity, we saw, um, uh, in terms of general adverse events, we saw neutropenia, which we see with venetoclax, and some GI toxicity, which is largely grade one or grade two. The particular um, uh, A's of interest, because we know these drugs have some side effects despite being targeted, we saw some bruising, so some, some, some conjunctival hemorrhage and some bruising. Neutropenia, which is associated with venetoclax, which responds to, uh, the, to GCSF, as we had in the previous talk, and really otherwise very acceptable toxicity. There was a single case of tumor lysis syndrome, which is similar to the, to, to the uh, 3% we're seeing with venetoclax alone, and that was managed successfully. It was actually in my site, and the patient re-escalated back onto treatment and is doing well. Seven patients had GCSF and uh, has been reported. In terms of response, the key secondary endpoint is MOD eradication. Uh, these are, this is only, we only have data out to six months for 38 of the patients uh, where we have CTs, clinical assessments, peripheral blood and marrow. And uh, of the patients, 37% uh, are MOD negative in the peripheral blood, 32% are MOD negative in the marrow, and the trephine biopsy uh, is normal in the, the vast majority of patients. Uh, in addition, if you look at the subsets of those patients who have failed chemotherapy and those who have had prior idolelacid, those patients seem to respond at a similar rate to the whole group. In terms of uh, IW cell response criteria, uh, which is a secondary endpoint, 47% uh, of patients have achieved a CR or CRI, and every patient has had an overall response, for, which for this group of patients uh, is impressive, I, I think, and that is similar across the patients who are refractory to chemotherapy or have had previous idolelacid. So in conclusion, we've demonstrated that the combination of ibrutinib and venetoclax can be given safely. We've had one single case of tumor lysis syndrome, which is what we would anticipate from venetoclax as a single agent, and that was manageable. The rest of the side effects were predictable, and again, were manageable. Uh, I haven't shown you the data, but no patients stopped treatment, and only seven patients have had any interruption in treatment, and only for a few days. Uh, we're seeing, even at this very early stage, um, over 30% of, of patients achieving an MRD negative remission, which was our target at the 12-month bone marrow st uh, stage with this combination. Uh, the principle of the Bloodwise Trials Acceleration Program is that we can accelerate therapies and combinations into phase three to change practice, and we've already modified our frontline FLIR trial about six months ago to include this combination in a phase three frontline study, uh, which is currently recruiting uh, very actively. Uh, thanks for your attention. And I'd just thank the uh, sites again and uh, the patients for their support.